something pretty different today actually. I'm gonna be cleaning out, sprucing up, redoing my sand monitors enclosure. You might be able to see it's a bit messed up. I'm always chucking different things in, whether it's leaf litter, branches, new logs that I find, just anything. I'm always chucking it in, giving her a bit of enrichment. It gets to the point where she's messed it up and it needs a full clean, full redo, and that's what we're gonna do today. So to start this video, I actually have to take you guys back to yesterday where I started prepping, getting some new things ready to chuck in the enclosure. So let's go back. Hey guys, I'm just filling up my wheelbarrow here with some sticks, kindling, old dried out rotten stuff I got here. I got a stump over in the paddock that I'm, I got the top knocked off this morning and I'm just gonna burn the rest out of it, out of the ground. I'll get as much of this stuff that's gonna burn really easily. Ugh. Chuck that on top, light him up, light him on fire. I think after that I might either clean out, do up either my beardy enclosure or my sand monitor enclosure, but I think I'm gonna do the sandy enclosure. <laughs> So this is us. It's gonna work pretty good, I reckon. There's a lot of deep divots and whatnot down in here where I'll be able to get that kindling and light it on fire. Really get him going. And that'll burn this right down into the ground and just get rid of it. Save me a month of trying to dig this damn thing up. The roots on this thing are insane. now guys for a basking spot in the sand monitor enclosure i've got two half cuts of logs with sort of a cutout underneath like a hide like a tunnel but it's getting a little short so i've got a new one here i've already sliced up one side made him nice and flat and i'm just going to do the other side so it sits nice and flat and then after that with the chainsaw i'm going to try and notch out some sort of a shape so you can still get under there use it as a hide as well as the woodies can go in there try get into the crevices and he can use that tongue flick his tongue not only a fantastic food source for him at his size but also fantastic enrichment hopefully this piece is going to be long enough no doubtably it'll fit snout to vent just the tail will hang off i can always chuck one of the older pieces in front of that one if we need to let's get stuck into it few cuts. Hopefully I should just be able to chisel out the inside and then beautiful nice height. That's looking more natural on that side. I think what I'll do now, I'll get some of those hot coals out of that fire I lit before. Coincidentally, drop them in the guts here and that'll burn off all the splinters, anything that might stick or poker and not a hey buddy not only that it might burn around the outside giving it a bit more of a uh, natural a real look i guess or i could completely ruin it time will tell <laughs> And we're back. Start off, I've just got a tub down here. I'm gonna take out all the logs and hides and everything. I'll leave her in there until I'm taking the substrate out. She can stay in there. There she is. She's gonna go berserk, so I'm waving my hands around. Give it a good wash and then decide what things we're gonna bring and put back in. A heap of the woodies are coming out of this timber as I take it out. The new piece I'm putting in, I actually tried to get some crevices so the woodies can go in there. Did you see her? She goes, she goes into that hide under that timber cutout and her tongue flicking, flicking, flicking. She's smelling, she's looking for those 
wood roaches hiding in the cracks and crevices and that's not only a fantastic food source but great enrichment and that's what she's going after now. But now I'm worried to take these out and lose my woodies. I'll give her a couple of minutes to try and catch them. Hi Joe Higgins, have a glorious tea. This is great, she's getting a free theme. plants when I put them in. I might hang on though just in case because the woodies and the crickets go and hide in there and again that's fantastic enrichment for it, trying to get them out of there. That's all the furniture out. I'll leave it to hunt any remaining woodies for me. We'll go outside, wash everything up, decide what we're going to bring back in, then we can get her out, get the rest of that substrate out and start decking it out with all the new stuff. <laughs> to grab this guys and there's a giant huntsman living in here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Come on. I don't know much about spiders but that's a huntsman. I don't know if it's some special huntsman of some sort but they're an awesome little spider or big spider. There she is guys, slash, slash my sand monitor. Surely everybody has watched Pokemon, sand monitor, slash, sand slash, perfect. That's where she gets her name from. She's about, ooh, how old would you be now? I think I got her at about one and a half. I think she's about three and a half, four now. But that's her, I'll chuck her in a spare enclosure I've got while we finish setting her up. She's stunning, isn't she? Just got the heat lamp off now. You can see I took all the dust off the UVB lamp, all the dust off the heat fitting. You get dust everywhere when your animal's digging around, looking for food, trying to dig for a cave or just digging for fun, and it just gets everywhere. ready to go. So you might notice this is a this is a glass enclosure. It's a four by four by two by two, I think. Just because it is a monitor lizard that's in here, they love it hot. They like it really hot. What I've done to help that out is I've just lined, I lined all the outside with a thin ply the whole way around. Put some little L brackets in the corner to hold it all together. And all that does, that really helps to keep all the heat inside the enclosure rather than escaping, especially during the winter months. Now we're up to the fun part. We'll go outside, we'll get our substrate then we can start chucking our furnishings in. So before I actually put the substrate in, I've got to put in my things that are going to sit on the very bottom of the enclosure. My main basking spot here, which I made. How good did this, let's turn it around actually. How good did this turn out guys? This is the log you saw on fire before. So it burnt out, made it look a lot more natural. Got all the grooves for the woodies to go in, grooves there and a nice flat top. So I just put it inside just to test the height and it's a little bit too little bit too tall so I probably want to try and take about that much off and hopefully it doesn't split it and that can go under the heat lamp. And then on the cool side of the enclosure, this is something I made up quite a while ago. So all I did, I got a piece of what's a piece of 40 mil conduit, decent length, drilled a hole. This is just a $5, I think a kid's arts and craft box from Bunnings. And look at that, it mimics sort of a burrow, a tunnel out in the wild. So she goes in there and she curls up nice and tight in here. And she's absolutely obsessed with this. She spends nearly every night in this little hide there. And that was really easy, a little two second jobby. Anyone could do it really. So once I chop this down a bit, we'll whack those in and then we can do our substrate. Here's my hide and my basking platform. So you can see nice big service area, burnt out logs 
like their animal would see out in the woodlands or out in Central Australia. It makes it look more natural looking. I also packed it out at the back with the log that was there before just to get that basking platform directly under that heat. I've got a little hide over here which will also get covered in substrate, can access her, she'll have a little hole there. The substrate here I'll also fill up to about there so she, she'll have the opportunity to dig out her own burrow and that hide goes all the way to the back. I've got my heat lamp, my T5 UVB, and I've got a down light on top just for visible light. Slash my sand monitor. She would probably only be in here for another month, another four or so weeks. And then I'm actually building an aviary for her outside. It's just stressful to get her out because she's a good size animal, but they're a, they're a slender, a sleek animal. So it's got to be really secure, really safe for her not to escape. That's the next thing in the works. Just keep in mind, guys. No matter what reptile you're keeping, you need these UVB lamps. They're just absolutely imperative to the growth, the strength, the activity of our animals in care. We need to provide our animals with as close as we can get to the outside world in their little worlds in here. I'll quickly go show you guys the aviary that Slash will be going into in a couple of weeks and then we'll get our substrate. We'll go outside now. So this is the new aviary I'm building. Brilliant aviary. I'm not sure on the actual measurements. Let's count it out, eh? Yeah, so it's about three meters by two meters. I chuck this pond and rock wall in before I um, I sort of had to lift it over because it, it was too big to fit through the doors and I've had this sitting around for ages and I wanted to utilize it. So I spent the last few weeks, of, I used timber sleepers all the way around, paved the inside and I've screwed the aviary on top. I've just been strengthening it up and also so I can get a nice deep substrate, I'm gonna put sheet metal all the way around there so I can build the substrate right up without it falling over. I have filmed an entire video building this aviary so that is something you guys will see as well at some point when I decide to release that. But for now, let's go get our substrate, fill up our enclosure inside so we can get Slash back in. So here's my substrate I'm using, guys. It's actually real sand and dirt from last time I was out west. This will be going in my beardies enclosure as well, but this is what the Samona, the beardy, and all those other arid species, this is what they actually live on in the wild. And it's messy stuff. It's still in my car everywhere from where I went. So it's gonna be interesting if the whole house turns red and the missus wants to kill me. But that's what, we, that's what we're gonna put in. We'll see how it looks, we'll see what the texture is and everything. If not, I can mix it with some bunning sand and some yuki mulch that I've got there. Let's get stuck into it. <laughs> See that going everywhere. I'm... I don't know how this is gonna go inside. play sand in with this one just to see how it looks. I think I'm running a bit low on the red stuff and I, I really want some for the beardy as well. Sand monitors, you do want a deep substrate to be able to dig her burrows. At the same time, she normally pushes it all up to one spot. Then she's got a big pile that she can dig in. I'll leave it like this for now. And if she's digging a lot and getting straight to the bottom, then I can top it up with more substrate. That'll be more enrichment for her anyway. That'll be something something different for her in a week or two. Chuck this fella back in, it's just a hide. Every now and again, she decides to sleep in it and I don't know how she still gets in it, to be honest. Probably should have put this in earlier as well. Now I've got those hollow logs out there that I'm gonna chuck in. And I do have a weird idea which I'll take you along with me. I don't know if it'll work or not, but we'll try it. Yeah, I'm gonna go outside and try that weird idea I was thinking about. I wanna get, think I know what I can replace these with. I mean, they look pretty cool dead in there, but chuck something green, maybe if it works in there. We'll see how it looks. So this is what I'm working with. I've got some of these grass plants growing in the paddock. I might be able to get the matic in sort of in the middle and just take out half and then I can chop it down to a decent size and chuck in the enclosure and that'll look pretty cool. <laughs> Get some more. Epic. 
pick. So I have plenty to go in with Slash and with the Bearded Dragon. I'll leave them out in the sun for a couple of hours, just let that root ball dry up, and then we'll chuck him in in a couple of hours, eh? She's been having an absolute ball. Like I said, that flat dirt won't last long. It's literally everywhere. There's mounds. Just moves it on the constant, on the daily. You can see where she's dug burrows under there. Just dug all that out, dug all that out, dug all around her, hide up the back. Super active animal, which is why I want to get her outside as soon as possible. She's just been in here while she's small, and she's, gosh, she's teetering on that size where I'm comfortable putting her outside without her escaping. I'll get her back out, I'll rearrange everything. I'll put some more play sand in. I'll wet all the surface of this and try and form like a hard crust. I don't know if maybe I can form a hard crust, be able to bury down under the crust, and that'll probably be better for her and less dust. Trial and error, eh? Not too shabby at all. So I've left this side sort of clear, clear for basking. Can lay just out of the basking area under the UV, half, half if she wants to. And then just an area here where I can put a water bowl. She can pace back and forward freely with nothing in her way. Up the back here, she's got all these little hides where the woodies and crickets can hide in. That's her enrichment, trying to get those out. She's got more hollow logs for herself, hollow logs for herself and then just some greenery, some natural, real greenery. All I'm gonna do now, like I was saying before, is I'll give it a nice water, saturate everything, harden it up a bit more and give it a hard crusty layer on top like it would have in the wild. I'm pretty stoked with how this is looking, guys. But yeah, I'm over the moon. If anyone's got any tips, tricks, or ideas, please chuck them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Any ideas anyone has, always helpful. But now I'll go grab her and I'll see what she reckons. There she is, already covered in red dust. I think you're gonna like it, girly. Or you just wanna hang out with me? <laughs> Let her settle for a bit, then I'll chuck some crickets in and we can try and get her running around. I've also got a rat in the fridge to treat her and thank her for putting up with my shit for the last two days. All right, she's in her burrow now, guys. Sometimes she waits. She'll wait curled up in the box, but with her head looking down the pipe, waiting for prey to just wander past the burrow so she can make the move and snatch him. Let's see if that's what she's up to today. I'll slowly open the door. Now she's at her feed, she can lay there, soak up that sunlight, soak up that heat, go into a bit of a food coma. Maybe tomorrow or the next day, I'll chuck either some woodies and crickets in and try and get you guys to see her running around, chasing everything, because that's super cool to watch. I also told you guys I wanted to get an LED bar to go on top to get more of that vibrant, vivid, bright light, sort of to mimic outside. And I have just gone to the shops and gotten myself one. I've just got to put a plug on the end, so I'll wire that up. Sit him on top. If it's any good, if it's nice and bright and I like it, we'll go grab another one and we can chuck him on the beardy when we're doing him up. We'll open him up, find where the terminal strip is. Put an appliance lead on, he'll be good to go. Terminal strips in the middle, so that's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There's already a hole there ready to go. The only thing I'm thinking right now, I obviously want all the light coming out the bottom down if I'm sitting it on top. I want all the light in the enclosure, so it could even be an option. It might look better as well if I put two strips of tape down and just paint all that side black so nothing comes out the side, just straight down. If anyone has any better ideas, something more slim and sleek or slim line or 
black even, let me know. I was just at the wholesale yesterday and saw this and thought I'd give it a crack. Well, I am an electrician by trades. This, oops, sorry, crashy. This isn't something just anyone should do. You'll end up burning your house. You know? weirdest angle so I don't know what you're seeing but you can see there's a little switch there so you got warm white which is gross that's like that's what you're gonna see in your granny's house just like orange yellow lights everywhere cool white eh, we're getting there but we want daylight so we'll flick that switch down to daylight put him back together it's like turning the lights on at Christmas time that's a lot better guys what do you reckon I'm pretty happy with that, eh? Yeah, that's like, that is double the brightness. That is just lighting up the entire enclosure. All the dark spots, that's just mimicking the sun. Color is literally called daylight. That's gonna be so much more beneficial for her. Hopefully really get her eyes and body adjusted to when I do chuck her outside in the aviary in the next month or two and she's not this like, whoa, it's a lot brighter out here. I'm stoked that I think I'll be going back to the shops and getting one for the beauty. That really comes to the end of her build. The only other thing I want to do is chuck some crickets in and get you guys to see her running around like a crazed bloody maniac and lunatic. I'll chuck some woodies in so they can start living in here and she can get that tongue flicking to try and find them all. If you enjoy this video guys, let me know what you think compared to the normal rescues. I'll try to get a few more videos out of my own collection. Might be something you will enjoy. I'm hopefully adding something to the collection in the next couple of weeks. That'll be something I'll be able to show you guys as well. Hopefully you can see already the crickets and the woodies going in. They go and they use all these real plants and real soils, real dirt, real logs with cracks in them and they go and they actually utilize those. They live in there, really gives us something to do, something to hunt like she would in the wild. Just like that. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic enrichment. That's Slash all done, guys. This will be a pretty good little home for her for the next month until she gets shipped outside, and then she'll really start living. Like usual, like, subscribe if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like this sort of stuff, or you feel like the rescue stuff, what you want to see more of. Let me know if you want to see a little bit of everything. Hope you enjoy, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.